I got back from college yesterday and immediately started to work on setting up the third summer of these urine fertilization plots. Um, I'll be continuing to use plot B and C from the past two years, but um, plot D from last year, just it was too small, and I don't want to start that even if I enlarge those plots. It just is too much of an effect that I'm not entirely sure. So I set up another plot, which will be plot E for this coming year. In each of the plots, I have three kind of subplots, um, one of which will be getting urine every four days, one of which, which will be getting urine every 12 days, and one of which is the control with no urine. This is the same as I've done the past couple of years. And all of these plots this year are the four feet by eight feet, as opposed to the smaller plot I used last year in addition. Um, well, the one exception to that is um, right at the beginning of the summer, I'm going to put urine on I have two smaller plots that I'm going to put urine on, which I'm not going to continue fertilization through the rest of the summer. So those are just for looking at how does a, a small batch of urine at the beginning of the summer affect grass growth. Because I was really surprised how early in the summer I was able to tell a difference in grass, grass growth the past couple of years. Um, so I think that that will really um, just kind of be a different experiment. Um, and I, I have one both on this plot and plot C. So unfortunately for this experiment, I'm going to be gone for 10 continuous weeks this summer. So I'm going to have to count on my parents to continue this as I have the past couple summers. Um, but I won't be able to do a couple other experiments related to this, or at least I find it highly unlikely. So in the areas with high fertilization like um, this one in plot D, you can really see how matted this dead grass is which is really significantly different than little dead grass showing and mostly this new live stuff in the areas where the um, urine was not applied. Many conclusions can be theorized from this urine fertilization experiment. Particularly because this is the third year, conclusions can be drawn from multiple years. Despite variation in the number of people who contributed urine to the plots each day, the total number of person nights of urine received by the every fourth day plots were very similar at about 40 over the entire summer. The amount received by the medium fertilization plots varied a lot more, between 13 and 18 person nights. These are less than the amounts from the previous years due to both being away more this year and stopping in late August this year where the fertilization had continued into the fall previous years. Unlike what I observed in plot A last year, where the effect of fertilization from the previous summer did not last through the next summer. It was still obvious this fall which section of plot D had had heavy fertilization. This differed then at the time of cutting in early August, where every 12th day plot looked the best, with every 4th day plot following shortly behind. It seems like the fertilization may have worn out in the medium fertilized section, but held on in the heavy section into the fall. Also unlike the past two years, there was significant and fairly quick regrowth in all the sections which were cut. This summer was much wetter compared to last year. Maybe this is the reason? Particularly interesting in comparison to last year is that the every fourth day part of plot E was almost entirely taken over by tangleweed, 
a plant which I had not previously noticed there prior, nor was dominant in the other sections of Eve. After cutting, the tangleweed, though present, did not dominate. Last year, tangleweed was dominant in the fertilized sections of plot B and D after cutting, which did not occur this year. Also interesting in the regrowth of E was that it seemed to be dominated by clumps of grass of a species which seemed different than the type of grass that is dominant in the unfertilized section. Though at least in the section with the medium fertilization, that type of grass is still regrowing faster than the unfertilized. This, along with other changes in plant composition, seem to indicate that fertilization changes which plants thrive, though it is not entirely predictable. Certain species seem to benefit more and take over, possibly after other species have been killed due to overfertilization. In neither of the plots where I just put urine at the start of the summer, tested with three and six person nights of urine, was any changes different than unfertilized grass observed. Though in most of the plots I have not observed any effect of the creep of fertilization, this may be happening in plot C. Grass downhill of the plot seems to be similar to fertilization compared to other nearby grass, but it is unclear if this is related to the plot. The likely reason for it to happen in this plot is that in the past year it seems that runoff has chosen a path flowing over the most heavily fertilized section. It would make sense if this water was washing some of the nutrients down into the grass below. I'm not sure how I'm going to continue this experiment with my life changing a lot in the coming next spring as graduating from college, but I would like to continue and I will certainly provide updates on this. In a future experiment, one aspect that I'd like to address is controlling for applied water. Based on the weather patterns and grass regrowth, it seems that the amount of water might have an effect on grass growth, and also it makes sense. This is a confounding factor because when I apply urine to the plots, it contains water, and I also put the rinse water on there, and with more fertilization comes more water.